One Ring, no subscriptions and many health tracking data collected without any efforts from your end. Ring Con promised best in class accuracy and battery life. And we are here to find out whether this is true or not. Let's inspect. If you follow tech trends from the past couple of years, you certainly know what this piece of tech is. Yeah, that's, that's a smart ring. And if you see such one for the first time, well, think of a fitness tracker such as the Mi Band series or the Galaxy Fit series with the shape of a ring. Yes, it has health tracking sensors inside, it has a battery, it has a Bluetooth module so that it can communicate with your smartphone and you can visualize the data. It's a pretty neat bit of technology and probably among the first celebrities to wear such during sports has been Cristiano Ronaldo and I think he had an aura ring. Well, that comes from the company RingCon and promises extremely accurate health tracking plus the best in class in 2024 battery life. And here on the channel, we're really good at exposing all the good, but also the not so good size of the tech. I'm the Tech Mishka, let's dive into it. Since this is a trend, we already have a choice of multiple decent smart rings out there. Most of the good ones are priced between $250 and $350, with Rincon being among the most affordable out of all, and it sounds very tempting, especially given the amount of features involved. Before the unboxing, if I may explain the process of ordering, you should get the sizing kit first. Pick the most suitable size for you, but note that simply putting it on the finger is not enough to take a good decision. Make sure to wear it for at least 24 hours in order to find out whether it feels comfortable throughout the whole day. Then, once you go for your preferred size and color and Ringong have a few interesting coating options, it will arrive and look like this. Once you lift the cover up, there's the quick start guide and some more details. Then we have the ring, which undeniably looks good. You can notice these two button bumper-like areas. They seem to be lenses, improving the outreach of the sensors. We'll come back to the hardware details in just a moment, because unboxing is not over yet. A battery-backed case, which I definitely appreciate a lot and is a great way to store and easily recharge the ring. This case has battery capacity of 500 mAh and is going to recharge it up to 18 times. Potentially, this is more than 7 months if the promise for a 7-day battery cycle is correct. And since we already talk about the hardware details, let me give you the full list. The ring is made of titanium and PVD coating, 7.8 mm wide, 2.6 mm thick, it is equipped with PPG and temperature sensors, accelerometer, has inbuilt Bluetooth module and communicates with your smartphone via the RingCon app. Let me be very clear about the specs and the hardware that we have inside. We don't talk about cutting-edge technologies because this very model has been designed close to two years ago. Then it has been crowdfunded, then manufactured, the first batch is shipped to backers, and now slowly making its way to more websites. You can buy it from Rincon's official one, as well as some localized Amazon stores. So yeah, it's, it's getting there with the obvious plan to be matching Aura Ring and Ultra Human Ring Air, something that I have presented to you a couple of weeks ago, apparently without any subscriptions and some promises that in certain areas it exceeds the expectations. I feel that the design is quite interesting, probably a bit bulky and we have here two nuts or bumps, you know, these are meant to enhance the optical performance of the sensors inside, but I would say they are in no way uncomfortable or leaving marks, which was kind of a surprise. And overall the feeling of the ring is really great. I, I can only say good things about the paintwork because, well, as soon as I do things with my hands I can easily scratch whatever is on my hand and I, I already had a few scratches on the ring but over time you know the paint is like self-healing so there's currently you know nothing left in terms of marks from scratches and I can show that throughout filming this video there have been some significant ones. So enough about the design, let me talk about the performance. Tracking steps is quite accurate. It's about 5 to 10% difference to the measurements taken by Huawei Fit 3, which I find to be trustworthy about these values. 
keep in mind that there is no gyroscope inside, so it only relies on 3-axis accelerometer, which in most cases is fine, but certainly not as precise as devices that rely on both. This visualized data is, by the way, from the Ringcon smartphone app, and while I did mention that there is no cutting-edge hardware, at least not now in 2024, the app is getting better and better. There have been some interesting enhancements in the last few months. The same happened with the firmware upgrades, which inevitably leads to accuracy improvements. And I can say that Ringcon is close to the maximums that could be extracted out of the hardware at this given point of time. The heart rate data is also accurate, but it is nowhere near the accuracy and the responsiveness you would get from a fitness tracker. Getting chunks every now and then is not equal to the true continuous tracking provided by the likes of Fitbit and Mi Band devices should a workout activity begin. Up until recently, this has been a major difference to Aura Ring and Ultra Humans Ring Air series, but as it turns out, the Ringcon app is also now on its way for a major revamp and could offer workout modes, which could be matching to fitness trackers already. It's up a lot more battery, though, and note that at the time I work on the review, this function is available only through the better version of the app, which you can only access after being approved to the closed Facebook group. Since we entered the battery topic zone, close to six days is what I got in my first cycles, but during the first day after recharging, there's a drop of close to 10% within less than six to seven hours, which is a bit suspicious. Probably a firmware glitch, because the other option I don't really like could be something wrong with the battery. Having the charging case with me is absolutely great, and it's more or less cable-free experience, since it can help me recharge the ring multiple times worth several months of using it. Going down the road with the measurements, sleep records look good, in fact very close to my current smartwatch, Huawei Fit 3, which by nature is among the champions about sleep tracking accuracy. What I find very useful is that Ringcon are giving you continuous feedback about your overall condition and will immediately warn you whether you need some extra sleep or not. On the other hand, unfortunately, this happens to be an indicator that the app reactions need to change because I didn't wake up at 4.30 as it is shown here. It's the battery of the ring that died at this point of time which kind of triggers the false assessments. There also is a skin temperature sensor it's more active during sleep time, maybe because it requires your hand to be in steel condition in order to get the precise kind of measurements, and it remains kind of hidden in the menus. You need to go to the sleep analysis, scroll all the way down, and then get to the temperature data, which has values different to what you're used to see when measured on your forehead or underarm area. You've seen it a few times already, so let's talk more about the app. I'm impressed with the depth of details in the Me section under Settings. You will receive estimations about the battery time left, firmware, tutorials, even airplane mode, which is gonna disable the Bluetooth feature. Note that you need the case for that purpose. Under Function Management, there's the option for period forecasts, helping to track menstrual cycles. All of the other details that you're going to find and see are presented in a very understandable fashion. There are lots of summaries, trends and recommendations that you may get based on continuously wearing the ring. Now, to open the topic about the shortcomings. As a starter, be extra careful with the choice for a size. Most people may have their pointer and middle fingers with the same kind of size, and you can take advantage of this fact when choosing the right fit for you. Being placed on my pointer finger, I got the ring scratched pretty much right away and figured that it also hurts my face when washing it. Being placed on the middle finger, it feels a bit uncomfortable, mostly due to the size, and it is obviously too loose for the ring finger. Concerning the other drawbacks, the smartphone app could use some extra info and provide a bit more explanations about well-being, and I want to see some more config options, such as these appearing currently in the better version of the app. A separate, dedicated temperature chart and a Strava integration might come handy too. Because, as it is now, Ringcon is the perfect wellness tracker, but in my opinion it fails to be a true fitness tracker, at least not without all the functions that we currently have only in the better version of the app. And depending on when you watch the video, probably this is already part of the normal version of the Ringcon smartphone app. So I think it's a 
pretty decent choice for health tracking. It's very comfortable, very well built, very reliable in terms of accuracy of results and uh, definitely exceeds in the area of battery life, especially compared to the competition by just a narrow margin though. And I can definitely recommend it this far, uh, given the fact that Rincon have had a very successful and well-maintained crowdfunding campaign with not too many people disappointed. I would say that's quite a serious achievement in 2024. So yeah, if you wonder whether I can recommend this smart ring, definitely a good catch. And I feel that there are some areas of improvement in the smartphone app, so I'm really looking forward to the forthcoming updates. That's my take on RingCon. You know, YouTube is about different people sharing different opinions, so I'd love to hear yours in the comment section below the video. Should you want to buy it? Well, you can check the video description area. And if you want more of these tech inspections, subscribe to the channel. If you want to see some more info from the backstage in the process of me making these videos, maybe you can think about becoming a channel member and support me in this mission to explore more cool tech. Thanks very much for watching. Stay fit, stay healthy. And I, the Tech Mishka, wish you a fantastic day. Bye.